Okay, so let me give you my objective analysis or take because I think that there's something important happening that affects all of us in the EV space who are watching or um, just entertained by. Whether you're Team Neo or Tesla or just trying to figure out what's going on in the industry, Tesla is kind of admitting that they've plateaued. They're not planning major production capacity expansions globally. Those ridiculously achievable vehicle targets in the compensation package, that's Tesla telling you that cars, um, car sales may not be the future or at least a legacy business for them the ai pivots make sense directionally autonomous vehicles humanoid humanoid robots and ai services these are massive potential markets but here's my skepticism what's going on everyone my name's obi and welcome back to the courtside financial podcast today we're talking about something that's been fascinating me for weeks now we're talking about Tesla. And before my Neo bulls start rolling their eyes, just hear me out. What's happening at Tesla right now isn't just about Tesla. It's about the future of automotive uh, manufacturing, AI integration, and what happens when a company realizes that the game that it's been playing is about to end. Within the last 30 days, Tesla board dropped what might be the most audacious compensation package in history. We're talking about a potential $1 trillion payout for uh, Elon Musk over the next decade. Not million, not billion, you guys heard that right, trillion. Now before you start thinking to yourself, this is just about the richest man uh, getting richer, let me break down what's actually happening here because the numbers tell a wild story. This comes after a Delaware judge threw out Elon Musk's $56 billion compensation package just last year. So Tesla's board went back to the drawing board and said, you know what, let's think bigger and by bigger i mean literally out of this world bigger here's how it works there are 12 market cap milestones at two trillion dollars that's the minimum threshold just to activate this thing and then increasing by 50 billion dollar increments so here's where things get interesting they're not just measuring market cap they've got operational goals that are kind of telling about uh where tesla thinks it's heading goal one delivered 20 million tesla vehicles cumulatively over 10 years. Now hold on, Tesla has already delivered over 8 million vehicles as of September 2025. So they're basically saying they need to deliver 12 million more vehicles over the next decade. That's barely over a million vehicles per year. For context, in just Q1 and Q2 of this year alone, they delivered uh, 720,000 vehicles despite declining sales in multiple markets. This is where my eyebrows went up because that target is suspiciously low. The article I was reading called this a gift indicator basically free money but goals three and four this is where the real story is one million humanoid robots delivered one million robo taxis in commercial operation notice something these targets are weighed equally with traditional car sales let that sink in they also got six profit targets based on ebitda starting at 50 billion and climbing to 400 billion which for those of you who don't live and breathe financial met metrics ebitda gives you an even clearer picture of operational efficiency than gross margin and here's the kicker musk can't sell any stock for seven and a half years and major stock sales require board approval. Plus he has to submit a succession plan before completing all these milestones. Let's rewind for a second and talk about what's happening with Tesla's product line because context matters. Remember the Cybertruck, the vehicle supposedly with 2 million pre-orders finally entered mass production on November 30th of 2023 after years of delay. The original price tag was $40,000. The actual price? nearly double and by the end of june this year they'd only have delivered 46,000 units the production issues weren't just about manufacturing complexity their highly anticipated 4680 battery cell this was supposed to be revolutionary full tabs the whole nine yards well after three years the dry process electrode technology still has serious yield problems they can't make them consistently enough the semi truck basically became a low carbon PR prop for large corporations and with current political wins, even that was becoming unnecessary. And those affordable models, the Model 2, the Model Q that kept getting teased in master plan parts one, two, and three, the ones literally hidden behind curtains in presentations, the electric van for commercial use, yeah, those are probably never happening at least not from Tesla's US operations. What you see is what you get. 
model S, model 3, model X, model Y, plus the Cybertruck. That's Tesla's line. A cyber cab doesn't even count as, an, as a conventional car. So here's where we get to the heart of everything. Tesla just released what they're calling Master Plan 4. And folks, this isn't about cars. The pitch sounds pretty official on paper though. Integrate artificial intelligence, autonomous technology, and large scale manufacturing to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable abundance. AI becomes the brain. Optimus robots become the workers and existing products like cars and energy storage become downstream application. The philosophy is growth is limitless. Innovation eliminates limitations. Automation benefits humanity and greater adoption leads to greater growth. Sounds inspiring, right? But here's what's actually been happening behind the scenes. Remember Dojo, Tesla's dream supercomputing project that was supposed to be the backbone of their AI ambitions? They just killed it. Disbanded the team, the head of project, Peter Bannon, officially left. Staff got released or left the company entirely. Now Musk's explanation was resource and resource integration for future chip development, but come on, you don't kill your signature supercomputing project if everything's going according to plan. That said, they haven't given up on AI compute power. They've just changed their strategy. Check this out by end of uh, Q3 last year, they had computing resources equivalent to 67,500 NVIDIA H100 cards. Just one year prior in October 2023, they only had around 10,000 cards. That's almost 7x growth in a single year. So why the hunger for compute? Full self-driving training, cyber cab development, and oh, that Optimus robot program that they're constantly talking about. They're not playing around with the AI pivot. Clearly, they're going all in. Now, here's something fascinating that doesn't get enough attention. In August, Tesla quietly launched the uh, Model Y L in China, and there's a more budget-friendly uh, Model Y version expected to launch before the end of the year. These weren't big, flashy releases. The Model Y L is arguably the most significant transformation of a core Tesla model yet, and it didn't even get a press conference. Why? Because these are products of Tesla's local Chinese team and they're somewhat roughly finished. But here's what matters. These vehicles are basically the spiritual remake of that canceled Model 2 slash Q and those electric vans. The Chinese team is building what Fremont won't or can't. The Lingang Gigafactory in Shanghai is about to become even more critical to Tesla's operations. The article that I read suggests that the Pan Pacific region centered on China will become the core market for Tesla's automotive business with more design and R&D being handled locally. So think about what that means strategically. While Tesla focuses on AI in the US, they're keeping um, the cash generating car business humming in China. But here's the truth that that compensation package accidentally revealed. Tesla needs that automotive cash flow it funds everything else. Okay, so let me give you my objective analysis or take because I think that there's something important happening that affects all of us in the EV space who are watching or um, just entertained by it. Whether you're Team Neo or Tesla or just trying to figure out what's going on in the industry, Tesla is kind of admitting that they've plateaued. They're not planning major production capacity expansions globally. Those ridiculously achievable vehicle targets in the compensation package, that's Tesla telling you that cars, um, car sales may not be the future or at least a legacy business for them. The AI pivots make sense directionally. Autonomous vehicles, humanoid, humanoid robots, and AI services, these are massive potential markets, but Here's my skepticism. Can they actually execute this transformation in 10 years? I don't know. I'm not one to bet against Elon Musk, but I won't say that I'm the most confident. For us watching Neo in the broader EV market, this is actually fascinating. Tesla is actually voluntarily seeding ground in traditional automotive to go start playing a different game. They're essentially saying we'll maintain our current car business for cash flow, but the innovation, the growth, the future, that's elsewhere. This creates space real competitive space. While Tesla's global team focuses on AI, uh, humanoid robots, and autonomous tech, other manufacturers can compete for customers who just want a great electric vehicle with the latest tech, i.e. Neo. Look, I respect what Tesla built. They pioneered this industry. Companies evolve, 
priorities shift and sometimes what got you to the top of the mountain isn't what you need for the next climb. That trillion dollar compensation package isn't just about money. It's a public declaration of a strategic pivot. Tesla is telling employees, investors, and the public exactly where they're going. Away from traditional auto manufacturing and toward AI and robotics. Will it work? That's the trillion dollar question, literally. Anyways, that's it for this episode of the Courtside Financial Podcast. I hope you found this useful, insightful, helpful, at the very least entertaining. If you found it any of those things, make sure you hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell, uh, bell icon, share the video, comment down below, and uh, like the video as well. All your engagement goes a long way in helping out the channel. We'll see you in the next episode. This has been Obi with the CF Podcast. Thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye.